Hey, what's up, Nerdgasm fans? Jerry here, a.k.a. Barnacles. Ask yourself, what do I not have enough of? The answer to that is clearly headphones. Now, a lot of people think that I have an unhealthy addiction to my headphones. But the truth is, I really love headphones. It's something that I've really got into, and it's like, you know, women love their purses and they love their shoes. Well, I love my headphones. Well, I think Sennheiser got sick of me abusing their HD 800 headphones, because these things are like 1,500 bucks. Every time I post a picture on Instagram of me putting them on with all the other things, they're like, oh my God, please be gentle with them, please. Well, the good folks at Sennheiser are now feeding my addiction. They sent me over a pair of game series, Game Zero, black gaming headphones, with integrated mic. The only other pair of headphones I have with a microphone is my Bear Dynamic MMX 300s, which don't get me wrong, are a phenomenal set of cans with an integrated mic. But this will only be my second pair that has an integrated mic, and tonight I'm gonna be using it on Tech Talk. All right, well, let's crack this baby open and see if it's deserving of the Sennheiser name. Well again, special thanks to Sennheiser for providing me a set of cans to review. They really thought that I'd like these because they are gaming centric and they have that microphone, which I have a lot of headsets, but when it comes to down doing stuff like live streaming, I, I, that microphone comes in so handy. Now I've got several other sets of Sennheisers. I have the HD800s and I have the HD180 wireless ones I use in the man cave and I actually quite enjoy them. So now open up the box here. You can see we've got the Sennheiser logo. It looks like they actually come in a case. And it's like a soft and hard case. That's cool. I really like headphone cases. Um, most headphones that I have just come with like a bag uh, or they'll come with like a display box. The really expensive ones, they'll come with like a display box that you like put on top of your stereo so everybody can go, oh my God, he's got the HD 800s. Oh my God, he's got those really fancy audiophile things. Well, that's quite literally everything that was in the box is in that bag. So let's go ahead and toss those aside. All right, get to the meat and taters. All right, well here we have the case. It has a carrying handle on it. That's very practical. It's actually pretty small. That would fit in your backpack, no problem. All right, let's unzip this bad boy. Flip it open, and there we have the cans right there. And it looks like there's another piece of foam in the top here that can be removed. That was just for shipping. And it's got a pocket where you can put some stuff in there. Uh, these are the cans right here. First thing I can tell you is they got a fair amount of weight to them. I honestly thought that they were going to be a lot lighter than that. Uh, that's not a big deal, actually, at all. I'd, I'd prefer them to be heavyweight and built with quality. And you can see here, it looks like the microphone's got like a little piece of plastic over it. And you can see the case has two little knockouts uh, so, so that you can figure out how to put these back in the case, I'm guessing. It looks like they fold up just like, like a so. And then you can take the cable and either coil it up or stick it in the little pouch over here. Oh, look, there's even some buttons on the inside to fasten it down so it can be a big pocket. And then once you get everything in there, you can button it closed so it doesn't fall out. That's cool. Let's go ahead and set the case aside. All right, looking at the headphones, it looks like, uh, let's see, they fold out like that and like that. That's nice, not too complicated. The microphone bends, you can see here, to position it. And it actually feels like it's made out of really heavy-duty material. It doesn't, there's no creaking. Wow, no creaking. Even some of my expensive headphones creak a little. Looking inside the cones, you can see the speaker and there's this red material on the inside. The pads are leather, really, really soft leather and it feels like they have memory foam inside of them. That'll make for a really nice fit. And it looks like the volume control is right on the side of the ear and it actually turns very, very smooth. It feels like a very, very quality potentiometer in there. <laughs> Look, I knew a big word. I knew a big word like potentiometer, <laughs> yeah. And the microphone feels super heavy duty. I can tell you right now, like on my MMX 300s, it feels really, uh, I don't want to say cheap, but yeah, it, it feels cheap. All right, let's see how they fit. All right, now I got them on my head. The first thing I tell you is the noise isolation is a lot better than I was expecting. They actually deadened down most of the room noise. Um, because originally I thought they were open back. They're actually closed back. So really good if you have a noisy environment. And I like the microphone. The microphone feels like non-existent. When you're whipping your head around, I can usually on my other, like the MMX 300s, I can feel the mic on the ear like moving around. It has a presence out there. They did a really good job of making this very transparent. I mean, if, if I couldn't see the microphone with my eye down there, I wouldn't even know there was a microphone on these headphones. Also, I noticed when you flip the microphone up right here, there's a distinct click in my ear. So they must have a switch on the microphone so that when you flip it up, it mutes. And when you flip it down, it unmutes. And I really like that because I hate looking for the mute button. If I want to talk to somebody, it's way more natural to just flip this up and be like, hey, what's going on? And then come back and flip it down. 
And I like that it's really big here next to the ear so that I can actually grab it. When I reach up to grab it and move it out of the way, it's not all flimsy. It, it's actually quite nice. Now they do not have a detachable cable on them. So the cable is fixed to the headphones. I do tend to like headphones that have removable cables because you can put better upgraded cables onto them. But the one thing that I will credit for them right now is that this is like a paracord cable. Um, I'll give you guys a close up of this, but it basically looks like it's woven uh, material and it's very, very strong. This stuff doesn't tangle on you because I've actually used this, this paracord looking cable before and they give you a lot of it. It looks like here, I'm guessing what I've got, ah, I just hit myself in the teeth with the connector. Oh, how the hell did that happen? Anyways, it looks like the cable here is about 10, I'm gonna say 10 to 12 feet in length. And then at the end of the cable, you clearly have the microphone and you have the audio. And not only are they colored, but they also have these little insignias on them to say what they are, whether they're the microphone or the headphone, which is really, really nice. So it's a very, very high quality cable. Compared to my MMX 300s, it's a much higher quality cable. Also, the adjustment on these, there is a lot of it. You can see here, I can slide both of them out. So if you have a gigantic head, these will fit you. And I like how smooth it is. You can actually put your fingers right up under here and just pull it down and snug it to your head that it moves very, very, very smoothly, but you can feel a distinct click so that they're not moving around and coming loose on you while you're playing. Now, I will say just from handling these for a few minutes out of the box and not listening to them, these are gonna be remarkably comfortable. The pad up here at the top has that same leather on it and a very, very, very soft memory foam. Putting these on, I would say that they're as comfortable so far is my AKGs, my AKGs are super, super comfy, the ones that I just picked up. Well, I'm gonna put these guys to the ultimate test because tonight I'm gonna to be live streaming with Jay's Two Cents for Tech Talk 40. This will be the first Tech Talk that I'm hosting personally, and it's gonna start in about 30 minutes my time, which means by the time you watch this video, it's done and over with, but you can go watch the pre-recorded show on my channel. It's Tech Talk 40. Now, normally, when I do Tech Talk with Jay's Two Cents, I use my AT2020 Audio Technical mic coupled with my Art Tube Amp MP to give me that really, really high quality audio. Well, tonight we're gonna put this bad boy to the test because I'm gonna use this microphone and this headset for the whole show. Then after that, I'm gonna listen to some music and I'll come back and give you guys the verdict. All right, guys, well, I spent most of last night listening to music and today listening to music, and I even did some gaming just to see how it would sound in a gaming environment. And I also figured the best way to test the microphone would be to plug it directly into the camera. So what you're hearing right now is the microphone on the headset tap directly into the camera without any sound card or amplification in between. So I did try the microphone out on Tech Talk, but I had a little bit of a problem with it where it was clipping, but it turns out it was because of my Zoom H4n microphone setup that I had that it was just pushing the gain too high and it wasn't allowing me to adjust it. So if you guys watch that show, um, that's why the microphone probably sounds so different in that than what it, what it does right here is because here I'm not actually applying an excessive amount of gain to it. So throughout my testing, to give me a baseline, I pretty much used the Bear Dynamic MMX 300 headphones that I had because they're my other uh, more higher end headphone that has an integrated microphone. So the prices though, however, is this is literally twice the cost of these. So I didn't really expect these to outperform the MMX 300s, but it did surprise me in a lot of ways. So let's get started with the pros. These are incredibly comfortable and they form a really nice seal with your ear. And I mean, it's a really nice seal. Like when you have heavy bass and stuff like that going on, it's very, very crisp bass and you actually feel it pulling on your eardrum. I mean, it's it's that good of a seal against your ear. And I really, really like that. The MMX 300s lack that because they don't use a sealable leather uh, pad. They use this like, you know, I don't know. They use like the soft material. Um, so you don't get that same effect. Now, as far as ambient noise cancellation, these actually are better. I found that when I'm wearing these, it cuts out more of the room noise than wearing these, but both of them reduce the room noise significantly. Uh, a lot of my headphones that I use are, are open back, and the open backs, you hear everything. They don't kill the room noise at all. So I really, really like these for that reason because I do have a lot of ambient noise in this room. All right, another big pro that I found on these is that they have a volume knob on the side. And when you turn it to 100%, that's basically the full volume that you're getting through it, but you can turn it down really easy. So if somebody walks in the room and wants to talk to you, you don't have to reach for a volume knob or turn something down. You can literally just reach up and twist the knob and it only turns about three quarters or a half. It's about a half a turn. So it's very, very easy to turn up to 100% and down. Also, another really cool feature is when you flip the microphone up, it'll actually mute, watch. See, you couldn't hear anything I was saying right there. So if somebody walks into the room, you can just flip them. 
and you don't have to worry about reaching for the cable to find the mute button or you know trying to figure that out. I like that, that that's a very, very natural and intuitive motion. And honestly, I think all headsets should do that. I also like that the boom on the microphone is really, really beefy. You can bend it in really close to your face. You can bend it away. It, it, feels, it feels very, very strong and very high quality. This guy right here, on the other hand, on the Barodynamic, is kind of a weird, like, telescope you can kind of get it into a better place it's more like an aviation headset um but of course you know you got this big obnoxious foam thing on the end which sometimes can be a little bit annoying but overall i'm curious to see how the mic sounds because i'm here i'm going to be hearing it for the first time with you guys because i'm going to be editing the footage from the camera and another thing is i can't hear myself through the microphone through the headset because i have it tied directly into the camera i'm going to recommend if you use something like this for gaming that you get some kind of mix amplifier that can basically mix the voice and the game audio together and feed it to your ears because i find that it's so muffled when i'm talking right now that i tend to be talking really loud and it's weird talking when you can't hear yourself hope hope that makes sense now the build quality on these things is really really good i like that they fold flat but they don't feel flimsy at all and they even come with the cool carrying case so that's pretty damn awesome now on to the sound quality because obviously that's what you guys all want to know about now i used both my woo audio wa7 fireflies amplifier and my mayflower electronics objective 2 head uh, headphone amplifier and dac and in both cases these absolutely sound wonderful now they don't have quite the same sound stage as the mmx 300s as far as a sealed ear headphone go the mmx 300s had a little bit of a wider uh sound it sounded like thing you know it sounded like you could pinpoint where each instrument and everything was coming from these tend to have a narrower sound stage but i found that these have a really really tight bass the mmx 300s have kind of a boomy low-end bass these had a really tight bass so when i was playing stuff like dubstep uh when it was doing really really rapid fast changes from deep bass to really really high tweet it was a very very clean transition and in many ways i thought that it actually sounded better than the mmx 300s but the mmx 300s are a brighter headphone if you like that br a really bright sound these ones are really good but these are a much warmer and more natural sounding headphone now now, I also tried this with Razer Surround through Razer Synapse and set it up for 7.1 virtual audio and I actually played the first campaign of Black Ops 2 and I found that the positional audio was dead on. I loved that when I was in the game and the you know characters were talking, I could rotate my character around 360 degrees and I could tell where they were positional to my head. The, the, the audio positioning and compatibility with the Razer Synapse stuff and the surround is, is absolutely phenomenal. I would say it was every bit as good as my higher end headphones. And I have found that some of the lower end headphones have a really bad problem with it where you just can't get it calibrated quite right and it never quite sounds where things are coming you know where things are coming from this this was completely natural and it literally sounded like you had a true 7.1 surround sound experience if you want to try to try out that razor software just go do a search for it online it's called razor surround or razor synapse is the software package it's it's completely worth it it's really cool and it works with non razor products also obviously now I found that the music sound was really really good the bass is really tight now this doesn't have that super deep thunderous bass the bass is very clean it can produce very very deep bass and it can even shake your inner eardrum but it doesn't quite have that really low end you know uh you know hoopty ride 215s in the back slam and super super deep bass um i felt like the mmx 300s were able to produce a slightly lower bass like i could hear some lower stuff that i couldn't hear with these but they were really really close and considering that these cost twice as much i was actually really surprised all right well you can't have the pros without the cons so let's go ahead and get the cons out of the way i did tech talk 40 with this headset and i found that after about two hours my ears were very very hot and i felt like my ears were getting sweaty the seal that it formed on your ears with these pads does tend to get a little hot so if you're playing in a room that's very very hot like my room gets when I turn off the, when I turn down the air conditioner it does tend to get a little bit annoying that that it gets so warm on your head I found that the MMX 300s actually stay a lot cooler over a long period of time but as long as you're in a cool environment or you don't mind your ears being warm it's it's not a problem at all it's a good trade-off for that seal that it forms now, the only other con that I really ran into with these is I noticed that when you turn your head, um, these tend to catch on your, you know, catch catch on your shoulders a little bit and tweak, and it'll break the seal on the ear and alter the sound. So if you're rotating your head a lot really fast like this, at least on my head, I noticed that it breaks that ear cup seal, and that does affect the sound quality. So as long as your head's relatively in a narrow area and you're just looking around like this, 
well, obviously you're looking at a screen most of the time. I've got I've got a wider setup than most people, but if you're if you're looking at a fixed screen, you're not even going to notice it. But if you find yourself looking around a lot and stuff like this, you will hear some some squeaking from the cups rubbing on your ears and stuff. The leather does does make a little bit of noise when it moves around on your ear, and you do break that seal, so it does alter the audio a little bit when the cups shift. But aside from that, I would say that's about the only two cons that I found with this headset. As far as a headset that has an integrated microphone, which could be a pro or a con, like I said, it's going to be up to you. You're going to be listening to this, and you can decide whether the microphone's good or not. Like I said, I have it plugged directly into the camera with no EQ added. This is absolutely just the most basic sound that you can get from the microphone unmolested. So hopefully it turns out good. I think it would be because this is a really nice-looking microphone. Also realize there is a huge amount of ambient noise in the room right now. If you've watched some other videos you can hear. I've got 24 fans running on my computer and I have an air conditioner running and I'm curious to see how well this microphone isolates being so close to my mouth and as a part of my headset. And I want to see if it cuts out some of that sound because my old Audio-Technica uh, AT2020 picks all that stuff up. Well guys, that pretty much sums up my review of the Sennheiser Game Zero headphones. I think they're really, really cool. I think for 200 bucks, you can't, I mean, they're a complete steal. I mean, realistically, the only other headphones that I've used in that category would be like the Audio-Technica headphones that I used that were in the $200 range, and they're even an open back headphone, and I didn't think that they sounded as good as these do. So if you want a hardcore gaming headset that has an integrated microphone, this, you can't really go wrong with this. I would really, really recommend that you give these a try. The sound is nice. If you like a warm sounding headphone, these are exactly what you're looking for. But I feel like they have just the right amount of bass, which is good. I'm, I'm a bass head. I love dubstep. I love bass. And I felt like these were able to pick up most of the sound that was being produced in the dubstep. And I was able to hear the really low stuff. It was really clean and the really fast transitions. I didn't get any distortion. And I found that they were incredibly high volume handling. Both of my amplifiers, I was able to max out the volume to where it was uncomfortable to listen to and I didn't pick up any real alarming distortion. Some of the headphones that I've used in the past, when you crank them up to a really, really high you know, volume, a list, a, an uncomfortable listening level, you tend to get a lot of distortion off the drivers. Sennheiser headphones, I've never really had that problem, and I still don't have that problem with these. They seem to handle the volume just fine. So if you're a deaf person and you love to pump up the volume to where it's making your ears bleed, this is a good option. One last thing I'd like to point out is these are a high ohm headphone. They're a high resistance headphone, so I don't recommend getting these to just plug into your onboard sound card on your motherboard or plug into your laptop. Get a proper amplifier. Go and look for a Mayflower Objective to a headphone amp uh, or some of the other headphone amps. Just do, do some research and reviews. I personally like the Objective 2 by Mayflower Electronics. I think it's a beautiful amp. It's inexpensive and it works great. But I would, I would recommend that you have a headphone amp because if you just plug these into like an iPhone, for instance, or plug them into your iPad, you're, you're, you're not going to get that, that really, really nice, clear bass and treble and that, that power that you get with a proper amplifier connected to it. And plus the listening level, unless unless you have really sensitive hearing, the listening level is going to be really low. That headphone amp is going to allow these things to really, really shine. So make sure if you're going to invest $200 in these, go invest a little bit more and get a decent headphone amplifier. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to get to editing this video so that you guys can watch it like you did right now. So until next time. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, favor, and subscribe. It helps me a bunch. Also, come follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I love interacting with you guys.